All right, well, let's just dive in. Let's just dive in because I think the quarterback position is really one. I think everybody has an opinion, especially on the top four. Uh, So we'll kind of break it up with, you know, two and two, because the the debate for most of the college football season was Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud. So I think a lot of people have their preference on one of those two. So I'm curious how you feel about those two. We'll just start with those two and see kind of where we go from there. Yeah, for me, Bryce Young's at the top. Um, the the and and the, the consistency number one, the consistency after you know this past year certainly when his supporting cast dropped off, you didn't see that as much with C.J. Stroud prior to the Georgia game. If C.J. Stroud had played like he played against Georgia the entire season, might be a different story. But he didn't. You know, it it, it was just that game or whatever. The the rest of the season, it, it sort of left you wanting a little bit more. Uh, whereas with with Bryce Young, uh, you got to see it. Um, you know, when the the offensive line had fallen way off, uh, the receiving core had really fallen off a shelf. Uh, you know, in particular with like the last five years of Alabama or whatever, like shockingly so. And and Bryce Young admirably fought through it. Uh, he, he faced more pressure last year than he had the year before, and was awesome against pressure. Uh, he's one of the, this class's best again, you know, under pressure, or whatever, under duress. Uh, he's able to consistently buy time, and he makes good decisions under under pressure. So, like his entire game, you love uh, processing the field is is his best trait. The arm is just fine. Like he doesn't have a howitzer for sure, but like for his size. The, the arm is better than you would expect. Uh, like, so it's, it, it's fine. Um, and, and, you know, the people talk about his size a lot, you know, and it's like this thing of like, oh, you know, is he going to be able to hold up in the NFL and stuff like that? Well, I mean, like the last couple of years, he played at the highest level and he played more games than other folks because Alabama went to the playoffs and, and, and stuff like that. And I believe he missed one game, correct? With the, the sprained AC joint uh, in his shoulder, that's an injury that that kept out almost everybody else that suffered it this past season for at least double the time. It's usually a two to three week injury. He came back after missing one. So, I mean, just, you know, it's only, you know, we've only seen him for for the couple of years, granted, but from the data set we have so far, um, like I'm, I, I haven't been given any reason to be concerned about that. Um, he, he's a guy that tends to protect himself when he is outside of the pocket and he's not, you know, he doesn't leave the pocket and run as much as for instance, a guy like Kyler Murray. So, um, for all the, you know, and, and, and also the, the other thing I'll say is, um, he's pretty pliable, you know, like we don't talk about that kind of stuff as much, but, uh, his entire body's twitchy. In fact, it's, it's sort of like it's made out of rubber bands, you know, like the, usually we talk about Twitch, like with, with guys, like their lower halves. Uh, he's also twitchy to the upper half, but, and, and usually we're talking about it, like just with like athletic profile, but with, with young, since, since the biggest red flag that people typically bring up with him is, is the durability thing. I, I feel like you got to bring it up a little bit, uh, you know, as, as a sort of defense of him, um, you know, especially in lieu of the fact that he only missed the limited time in the sec. I, I, I think that that could be, you know, I, I think that's a thing. Um, so anyway, I'm I'm not as concerned about him with uh, with CJ Stroud. Like his game, like I said, but uh, was a little bit down this year at the, at the start of the year. But I love what I saw uh, at the Georgia game. Uh, if it wasn't for the Georgia game, I actually might have rated him uh, quarterback three. But he he salvaged the the quarterback two designation for me in the Georgia game. It and particularly being able to make the decisions and throw when moved off of his spot. Right. Because like b- before he had, he was played with all these stud receivers and everything. And he's just standing there in the pocket that he, he throws it to do whatever. And it's like, all these guys are first round receivers and whatnot. He never has to move off the spot. He's playing behind this ridiculous offensive line. And in in your head, you're like, man, I've seen this, this movie before. And you're starting to get a little bit scared. It's like, you see it with Dwayne Haskins and like different stuff like this. And it's like, man, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit scary. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's like, does he, you know, can he not, you know, throw on the run. Is he not good against pressure? Because he wasn't as good against pressure, uh, definitely as Bryce Young during his career. And it's like, man, if if this guy cannot uh, uh, make plays on the run, or if if you move him off his spot, and if if he's going to just struggle and implode, um, that's going to be an issue in the NFL. 
because he's not going to be his offensive line isn't going to be so pronounced better than the defensive line of the opponent as it was at Ohio State every single week or whatever. Like the equation is going to change at that point. Um, but the the Georgia game showed enough, I think, where it's like mitigates the risk with, with that, you know, enough to to sort of lock him into that that QB two spot. I think I agree. It's hard because. You know, Bryce Young, the size always comes up. And honestly, it feels like any six foot quarterback, it's immediately, oh, his size. Like, it's just kind of like almost like a lazy thing that we just do naturally. Uh, but obviously, yeah, like if, if you have a, a 6'5", 260 pound defensive end, that's going to hit a guy like Bryce Young. Obviously, you're concerned. But I think the, the thing that people don't realize is you mentioned it before. He's, he's a twitchy guy. So like the fact that you think about that, you have to realize that that player has to get into position to actually make that hit. And Bryce Young is not a player that gets in those positions because he is so twitchy because he's, he's so crafty when it comes to in the pocket, outside of the pocket, just nothing really rattles him. So it's almost like, yeah, it's a concern, but you have to get in that situation and that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, that it's almost like the concerns are, are really like few and far, you know, it's just, it's hard to come up with, too many concerns with Bryce Young, even with his size. And it's just really fun to watch. And, and CJ Stroud, I agree with you said what you said too. I think he kind of just fell into that lull of like, oh, well, on that stage, just kicking the crap out of insert opponent here. And it's just kind of that expected. And that kind of hurt him in a way. But also it was just, yeah, like you said, if if the route plan A doesn't work, plan B almost is like, oh, I, I didn't really think about this. Uh, but then, yeah, the Georgia game was, honestly, the Georgia game was, probably his best game in his career where he's yeah. just, he is balling and he, it doesn't matter. He's playing against, I mean, granted Georgia's defense wasn't what it was the previous year, but it was still a really good defense. And yeah. some of the guys are going to get drafted really high. So I, I think that this debate was really fun to watch play out. And it was fun to see Bryce obviously take control of that spot. But I, I think CJ Stroud has still got a bright future. I think a lot of people still believe that too. The next two, I think is probably the more polarizing topic uh, and that is Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. And, you know, we've seen some mock drafts recently have Anthony Richardson go first overall. And maybe that's just a little bit of an overreaction. I mean, obviously, the kid is super talented. Uh, the peak of his game is right there with any quarterback in this class, I think. And then you have Will Levis, who is you know, a little bit better version of, uh, you know, the Mitch Leidner hype in a way. <laughs> uh, I hate to compare those two because they're not comparable. But anytime I see something like that, where it's like, oh, this quarterback who didn't really produce a ton in college is just this first round pick suddenly. And I think that we're trying to make Will Levis something that he's not. I don't I think that he's a bad quarterback. I just think that we forced this narrative for some reason. And there's, you know, there's there's stuff to like about him. But I'm kind of curious what you think. Between Anthony Richardson and Will Levis, which one you'd go with and then how you feel about the Will Levis hype? Yeah, I, I, I was never in on 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 the Will Levis hype. Um, and so like uh, uh, Richardson's been my the QB three for me, like from from the get and and Levis has been locked into the, the QB four. Um, and, and those guys ain't ain't changing. Like both of them are, are high risk um, and and high ceiling I, I i guess so you know both of them are are, are dice rolls you, you're gonna have to work with both of them because both of them have uh sort of how, how would you say uh uh like th things that were if it's not fixed they're they're gonna be boss um so like is you know whatever um and and with both of them uh like one of the primary things with both the guys it's it's mechanical right and and that's where the the accuracy issues with both of them manifest um, but like, I, I guess like when you're talking about the differentiation between the two and, and why do I have Richardson, if I, if I was going to give the, the short answer, uh, the two prong short, short answer, uh, number, number one, um, Richardson is better under pressure. Like I, I was talking about before Levis's game tends to crater under pressure. Levis turns pressures into sacks at a ridiculous rate. In, in fact, I got the I got the numbers here in my spreadsheet. One of the highest in the class in, in terms of that, he uh 26.8 percent of pressures were converted into the into sacks. Like I said, right near the top of this class. Richardson, one of the best in the class of that. In fact, one of the only guys in this class with a single digit number in that, 9.2 percent. So so you, you have that. Um, and then the other thing is Richardson makes really good uh decisions. Um, in, in the pocket, whereas Levis puts the ball up for grabs a lot, 
uh, is, is, is the other thing that, that I would say about that. So I'm going to go, I, I go with Richardson. Oh, in the third, I, I said two prong, but I, I, I'll say three. Richardson has the higher ceiling as well. He got the better tools. So for those three reasons, I would put Richardson at, at QB three. And, and I'm pretty confident in that. You have to put Levis in the top four because Levis, the upside, if he hits, it's, high, it, you know, it, it's, it's clearly higher than anyone beneath the top four. So you, you just you just have to because of the position value. But like again, like when you're comparing him with Richards, I, I just can't get there to to put and leave us above Richardson. I I just can't. We just had I haven't seen it. And even before the season began, people were talking about, you know, talking about him in the, the top 10. And it's like, you know, you mentioned positional value. And obviously, fortunately or unfortunately. Uh, depending on who you are, that obviously impacts where certain guys go. And, and it depends on what team is drafting, who's going to trade up. Um, you know, you have multiple teams, more than four in the in the first round that need a quarterback. And they're going to have to give up quite a bit uh, to, to get one of those guys, regardless of where they pick them. Uh, so that's going to be really interesting, too, is see who trades up and then who do they take with that pick? Because I don't think that every team is going to have, you'd like to think that everybody has Bryce Young as QB one, but there are some teams that are probably gonna be like, Oh, Anthony Richardson has a cannon. Like what if that works out? And you know, then we don't need Bryce Young because we have this guy who can just sling it everywhere. And so I think that's going to be interesting. One thing I actually think Joe, Joe, if you don't mind me interrupting, I I actually think around the league, there's more split opinions on that. Um, And, and, and we'll end up seeing, and and maybe that, you know, who, who knows, you know, how this ends up playing out, but, there's a scenario where, where things could get crazy. This idea has been forwarded to me, the um, the sort of chaos theory, where if the Bears decide to stay at one because they fall in love with either, pr- probably more probably Carter, but but Anderson would, would be the other one. If if they end up doing that, um, and then Houston, they, they pick at 12. If, if Houston is okay with the idea of getting the, the fourth one. If they feel like that, that could happen. Maybe they take the other one because they, like, they feel like they're the, um uh, th- that the guy that they like the other teams, you know, the, the, the other teams like the, the other guys higher. Um, then maybe things get a little bit crazier. Um, we'll end up seeing, but I, I don't think that there's a consensus on that. I, I think that there are teams that have Will Levis as the top guy, I think there might be some teams that have Richardson as the top guy. And there's certainly teams that have Stroud as the top guy and Bryce Young as the top guy. Well, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with that. I think you'd be naive to think otherwise. Uh, as you and I both know as uh, yearly subscribers to the pain that is the Minnesota Vikings uh, <laughs> after drafting Christian Ponder in the first round, oh. I, I've, I will never not believe that teams evaluate quarterbacks however they want to. And I, I believe, you know, Christian Ponder and even – Jake Locker was that same draft. It was like, what are you guys doing? Like, I mean, obviously, I'm not getting paid a ton of money to evaluate prospects, but Joe, I Joe, have two that, eyes. That, that's the comp for Will Levis, Jake Locker. Oh, yeah, I, well, I've seen that too, and it's 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 fun because Jake Locker was so much fun at Washington, and it's yeah. for me as I'm more of the college guy. Don't get I love watching the pros and whatnot, seeing these guys go, but watching Jake Locker in college and then projecting him at the next level was like, ah, this is like, there's, there's some things we need to like stop and reevaluate. And Levis is the same way Uh, you mentioned, you mentioned positional value and that kind of leads into the next position, which is running backs. And it's kind of a position you almost don't want to play anymore because everybody (laughs) seems to, I mean, we even saw in the Super Bowl, both the chiefs and the Eagles were kind of going with a little bit of a rotation. And it's almost like the feature back, I don't want to say it's going away, but I just feel like you see less and less of it. And B. John Robinson is the name that's sitting at the top. And I think he's a guy that if you had him in the draft 20 years ago, he would be a top 10 lock, like for sure, top five Easy. even. And Easy. now obviously the game has changed so so much, and that's just part of it. But I, And I think that he does a lot of good things uh, in the passing game as well. But I think a guy that's behind him who maybe isn't going to challenge him for RB1, and maybe I'm wrong, but Jameer Gibbs to me at times was really Bryce Young's only option as a runner and a passer. I think even in the Texas game, I don't think they had a wide receiver that they're like, hey, we feel confident that 
Corey Brooks is going to step up. Jojo Earl is going to step up. So it's like, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to slide Gibbs out in the slot against either a safety or a linebacker. And he looked really good. And, and I, I don't think, again, I don't think he's challenging Bijan for that top spot, but I think that he is a guy that can really be a good value for a team. It's just tough to see that these position, this position isn't as valuable as it once was. Yeah. Jameer Gibbs might, might've, might've been the best receiver on, on Alabama last year. Uh, I'm glad which, you think that way. I said the same thing. Yeah, which which might be might be damning by faint praise uh, based on the receiving court that Alabama had last year. Which Joe, you and I are, like we know. Uh, I, I think some people that you know the p- people that don't watch college they might think we're exaggerating. Uh, we definitely are not exaggerating. That receiving court was was dog. Uh, you know what? But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, Jameer Gibbs. Uh, what a fun player. And, uh, you know, like, um, the, the, some of the, the guys that have come out of Alabama in recent years, you know, it could be like, Oh yeah. And I'm going to go back to the, the thing I was saying about Bryce young, but it's like, you know, some of the guys in recent years would be like, Oh, you know, they, they play with really good supporting cast and, and maybe they were helped by the context, but Jameer Gibbs, he, he played with a dumpster fire Georgia tech team, you know, the, the couple of years before, and then he goes to Alabama, their offensive line was way down. And then the, the outside receivers, Nobody was scared of them. He was by far the best skill guy. And so it was like him and Bryce Young. It was like the two-man show there. Uh, it, it was a different scenario than it had been in the past with Alabama. And, uh, you know, Jameer Gibbs showed that he can sort of handle the load as far as that. Uh, not in the the way of like a, a Derrick Henry, of course, but in the way of like, you know, we'll get we'll get, you know, like 60 uh, percent uh, of our usage as, as a runner and then we'll get, you know, 40 percent or, you know, w- whatever the thing is as a receiver. He's so gifted as a receiver. He's so dangerous. And that's what we're a lot of the, the value for the NFL is going to come. Uh, the, the, the usage that you can get him as a receiver, both, at, you know, out of the backfield. And then, like you mentioned, if you want, you can shift him out into the slot. His routes are great out of both. And then his hands are really, really good. He's just so dang smooth. The movement plays both as a runner and as the receiver. You, you see that with the with the routes, you know, as well, because his feet are just electric. Uh, the acceleration is, is is instant as well. But then, you know, so he has the instant acceleration, and then the the feet are like lightning, you know. So so it's just really, really hard to stay with him. And then, like I said, both those things manifest when, when he's a running back as well. So I'm I'm a big fan of his. Um, the he he's not as big. He falls under the size threshold, and you you know the devaluing of the position, like you were mentioning. Those are the things that are going to keep him out of the first round. If it wasn't for those things, he would be a back end of the the first round player. He's going to go in the second round. He, he's just too valuable not to. I comp him to a local guy. I comp him to Delvin Cook. He reminds me a ton of Delvin Cook. Most people comp, comp him to Elvin Kamara. I, I see a little bit more of Delvin in him. I I don't know. Maybe it's just because I, I see more of Delvin. The the only thing that that I nitpick with uh, uh, Gibbs outside of the the obvious size thing is he's not a good blocker. And and he doesn't and, – and well, I guess the by extension, he doesn't have a ton of play strength. But that's that's like literally it. Yeah, it feels like you're almost like nitpicking at that point. And yeah, which is which is good because I mean that I mean you have to find you have to evaluate a prospect both good and bad. You know, we can't just always look at don't get me wrong, with guys like Jameer Gibbs and B. John Robinson, it's like, well, there's a lot to pick from that's really, really good. Uh and it, you know, it's unfortunate that they honestly both of them, there is a chance that they both go in the second round, which is really unfortunate because their talent is first round talent. It's just that the NFL is so different and teams value certain players over others. And I think the other hard part is the free agent class obviously is uh, it's going to be something that teams look at because there's a lot of options in free agency. But also I think that this, this running back group has some good options in the later rounds too. Is there anybody that sticks out to you that could be uh, the steal almost? Like what, what round, well, where are we talking? Where, where's our threshold for the sleepers? Pro- day three, day, day three is probably. I mean, obviously, you can get some sleepers in day two, but day three is more that big time sleeper that everybody's looking for. Yeah, I, I got a couple. Um, so I know Ty J Spears had a huge yes. week at the Senior Bowl, and I've been yeah. I've been watching him for a while, so it's not news to me. But it's just fun to see everybody else like, oh, dude, this guy can play, and it's really fun. 
Yeah, it's yeah, it yeah, it, the college football thing. Cause yeah, like yeah, yeah, guys like us have like I mean for years with Tajay, but like um with with Ta- like you saw the flashes for years, right? But like it it wasn't until the last half of last season where it was every week and it was boom, 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 going up. Whereas like, oh boy, like now like it was like the Tajay Spears singularity like the second half of the last season. And then by the time he got to the USC game, it was like, oh my God, like this guy, like ho- holy moly. And then when he when he got to the senior ball, you know, you're, you know, at that point, then you're hanging out with, you know, these NFL folks that, that haven't seen a lot of these kids. That was a real treat to get to to sit with some of these guys that had never seen Tajay before. And then they they get to see him move. And, and you, you hear like the, whoa, like fr- from the crowd. Yeah, um, like obviously, I'm I'm a huge fan of Tajay Spears, and in uh, at in Mobile, he crossed off or put into doubt uh, a series of the questions that were on his evaluation while proving a lot of the strengths. So, I, like, I mean, he obviously was 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 the the huge riser. Just for for time considerations, I'll I'll, I'll stop talking about him. A couple of the other ones that I I really like. Keaton Mitchell, I think he's going to be a huge riser at the, the combine because he's going to test like a banshee. Love that kid's game. Um, Evan Hall, uh, another kid that was at the senior bowl. I'm a big fan of his. I think he's criminally underrated in part because of the situation he was in at Northwestern where he's stuck on this dog crap team where it was you know basically just him and Skaronsky and the other nine starters were terrible. Um, but I, I really like his game. He is super underrated as an athlete. Um, and I, I think I know why, uh, there's people out there that were like the, the, the prevailing notion people were saying, oh, he's going to run a four, six. There is no chance he runs a four, six. The guy was a high school track star and, and on, on film, like, I, I think he, he looks like a four or five guy. Evan Holt says he's going to run a four, four. That's what he told us in Mobile. And he told, uh, I, I saw, uh, Chris Thomason, our pal from the same Paul Pioneer press, he tweeted out, a li- I think just a little bit ago, that Evan Hall had told him that he there's even a shot that he could run in the high four threes. That would surprise me. But there's a better shot for sure that he runs in the four fours than he runs in the four sixes. I, I still think he's going to run four or five. But um, the, the, the people throwing out the four six thing, um, they were only doing that for one reason. And it had nothing to do with anything that they saw in film. Uh, I'll leave it at that uh Evan Hall great receiver uh the, you know the other thing that I'll say uh one of the best receiving backs in this class both out of the backfield and then you want to talk about a, we we're talking about Gibbs you put him in the slot Hall was one of the, the the this class's leaders both in terms of percentages of snaps out of the slot but also on the perimeter his routes are awesome out of the backfield also out of the slot also on the boundary like I mean you want to talk about a guy like a, a I don't want to say chess piece, but like, like one of those movable guys that like, um, uh, what's his, the Shanahan fella, you know, you know how he like on every play, it's like, he just shuffles the deck of where like, you know, you never know where like all the guys are going to be like kind of Evan making Hall, it up as he goes. Yeah. It's like, Oh, you know, where's Kittle going to be on this player? Where's Debo going to be? Where's the, the use check fella going to be, you know, like that's or McCaffrey, you know, like that's Hall. Like you can like put him anywhere. Right. Like, um, and, and it plays. And I also think he's a better runner than, than he gets credit for as well. Um, it just didn't get a shot to coalesce between, uh, buying that dot crap offensive line. One other dude that I would uh, toss out is Dwayne McBride that I don't think gets enough credit. Uh, super duper productive runner at UAB. He, they didn't play him on third down basically at all, but that like, but we don't know, like, we, we don't know if he can, like what he can do on passing downs because basically their offense was first down, hand the ball to Dwayne McBride, second down, hand the ball to Dwayne McBride. And then if they'd gotten a first down at that point, then it was a hand ball to Dwayne McBride again. Uh, and then if it was a third down, then they took him out. That, that's when Dwayne McBride got to rest. So it just, it just was what it was, but love the physicality uh, with him. Love the way that he makes people miss. I love the way that he, how do I put this? It's like a picture where um, it, they, they have a real gift for generating. Uh, how do they say it in baseball parlance where it's like the um, with the hitter, the contact, it's always, you never hit it on the, on the screws. So it's always off angle. That's what he always does to defenders. 
they never are hitting him completely on. And so he, he's able to slough off of him. I, I just really like the way he plays. And he's above the size threshold as well. I think his game will translate just fine coming up from the G5. So I, I, I definitely had to mention him as well. Th- those would probably be the three top guys that I would toss out that are like currently projected as day three that I'm pretty bullish on. Yeah, I think for me, I get I get to a point with the NFL draft that I've heard about the top guys for so long that it almost gets kind of boring. <laughs> it's like we've talked about B. John Robinson versus Jameer Gibbs, Bryce Young versus C.J. Stroud. Let's talk about some of these random dudes that you've never heard of. Yeah. Or you probably don't know. And that's that's the fun part, too, is seeing some of those. Because a lot of those guys are, are going to turn into starters in the NFL and, and whatnot. So it's going to be it's going to be well, fun Joe, to see. And, 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 and this is where we shine, right? Because like these guys like down, we've watched all these guys for years. You know, like all the, you know, Sir Roderick Thompson. And like, it, it was funny when we were down at Mobile, they, uh, um, who was Roshan, he broke his hand on, on the Tuesday. And then, uh, uh, you know, like we, I think we were at dinner or something and, and someone in our party was like, they just announced who, who replaced them. And, and, you know, it's like, who, and, and someone was like, uh, it's this guy named, uh, say Raderick uh uh Tom Thompson and uh and I was like oh it's a Texas Tech and I was you know it, like I started talking it like nobody knew who he was but I was like going nuts about him whatever like we've been watching these guys like th- this is fun so I love talking about the, the down the bar guys that's that's super fun that is super fun uh we're, we're gonna flip over to defense really quick to finish this off uh, we'll go really quick with the defensive line because uh, I don't think there's a ton to really discuss. I think we kind of know who the top guys are. I'll ask this kind of a hypothetical. This is a big if, but if Brian Brissy didn't have injury concerns, do you think the gap between him and Jalen Carter would be closer? It, it would be, yeah, incrementally for sure, but um, not not in terms of like taking over for him because like for me, Carter, his spot is unimpeachable. To me, Carter – is if, if you took away the positional value of quarterback, it's it's Jalen Carter with a bullet. Like I like right now, I got I got Bryce Young in the top spot just because of the position positional value with, with quarterback. But um, like I, I can't move Carter out of there. But uh, Brice, your your point's well taken about the 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 injuries that kept him off the field, and then also like um non injury things. You know, I mean, like he had an illness. And then also, I mean, even outside of that, his um, sister, wasn't it his sister passed away this past yep. season? Like, yep. I mean, like he had a lot of stuff go wrong or, or stuff like that outside of his control. Um, and, and so it was tough. But yeah, I mean, like Ballyhooed recruit and you saw the flashes, uh, the the upside for sure is still there. Uh, the combine's important for him, right? Like uh, the medicals are for sure important for him because you know, again, for a guy that that had a, a tough time staying on the field, but the 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 athletic profile has always been there, uh, and he's a guy that gets after the quarterback. So, like you know, as as long as the 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 doctors you know give the thumbs up and everything, kids going in the first round for sure. Um, we'll, we'll end up seeing where he goes. Going to be interesting the way that the NFL sees him. You know, if if like there's a team that you know, like if the NFL ends up being a little bit more bullish on him than, than we think right now, or if maybe he falls a little bit lower, like in the first round, but I would be stunned if he fell out, out of the first round, it, you know, barring something crazy with the medicals, he, the kid's just too talented. Yeah, I agree. He's just, I think even when he stepped on the field at Clemson as a freshman, I was like, this dude's six five three hundred as a freshman. Like he, he does not look like a freshman ever. And I think, yeah, he'll, it, it's tough with everything that happened, but obviously it, it'll be fun to see what he can do at the next level. Um, we got a little bit of time left, so I kind of want to go to a position that the Vikings have kind of been linked to. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts even after the draft that they had last year, and that that's the cornerback position. I think that this is a really talented group. I think that you have a lot of good size with a bunch of different guys, guys like Christian Gonzalez, Joey Porter Jr. I'm curious who you think – uh, is is your your CB one, uh, and then you know how many of these guys are our first round guys? It's funny because this uh like like I think the cornerbacks it's one of the strengths of this this entire draft class, and the the thing that really sticks out about about it, and and in part like the the whole the draft class as a whole, the the outside uh, press man uh, uh, corners, the the length of them, uh, you know, like like the frames and 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 the 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 arm length, um, and yet. 
the my top cornerback, it's not the the size guy. It's it's Devin Witherspoon. I just love that kid's game. I absolutely love that kid's game. Uh, and he just shut everybody's lights out this past season. Nobody can get away from him. He, he, like he is in your hip pocket from the time the game starts. And then when you try to go into the tunnel at halftime, he following you into the tunnel. You cannot get away from Devin Witherspoon. You try to get on the bus. Devin Witherspoon's followed you out of the bus. Uh, he, he is just so damn sticky. He's so damn feisty. I, I like his game so much. Uh, so like for me that like, if it's my job that's on the line in this class, like, and, and, and I know the other guys, their measurables are better. Like Christian Gonzalez, his measurables are going to be better. Uh, um, uh, Porter's certainly bigger, you know, like he fits the, 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 uh, you know, the, the press man ethos more Cam Smith is going to be more athletic. You know, you go Kelly Ringo, he way more athletic and, and way bigger, everything like that. I don't care. I'm taking Devin Witherspoon as the first cornerback. I, I know a lot of people have it like closer. It's more fluid, whatever. Um, for me, that's the receiver position was where it's like more like I need to wait till the combine, but I will say this, unless Devin Witherspoon falls on his face during the athletic testing or he, he like measures in like, and it's way off where Illinois had him in conjunction with that. He, he going to be my, my cornerback one that what he did last year. It's just too impressive for me to turn away from that. Yeah. He's uh he's definitely someone that's been, especially lately. I think people have just started to watch his film a little bit more and, and he's really rising up, which is fun. Cause he's, even even not even this past year, the the year before, that dude is tenacious. He is someone that is like you said, everywhere. He is literally in in your hip pocket. He it doesn't matter if it's in the trenches, it's in the slot, deep down the field. That dude is not going to lose many matchups. He is it's it, it, and it's kind of a reason why I also like Clark Phillips is yes. because they don't have that size. But those dudes compete. They are ultimate competitors. And it is, yeah, you know, even you look at one thing I challenge people to watch with Clark Phillips is watch his matchups against Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison yes. made a lot of defensive backs look really stupid because he is so good at creating separation. And Clark Phillips didn't let that happen. Mm-mm. He was sticky. Yeah, exactly. There, there were times where it was, even if he got beat, Clark has a lot of good quickness to be able to catch up. And he's so smart when the ball is in the air, he's not going to high point the ball. A lot of guys are probably just gonna be able to beat him that way, but he's so good at seeing where they're coming down to be able to punch the ball out to. And I think those are the kinds of guys to me that are, are really fun. Don't be wrong. Joey, Joey Porter jr super talented, has the name that everybody recognizes. Christian Gonzalez is on the way up, coming from Colorado to Oregon. And then Keely Ringo is just, I think that he's super aggressive. Obviously, it gets him in trouble at times, but, you know, there's there's a ton to like with so many of these guys. So it's almost like you want you almost want to be a little bit different to find a guy like Devin Witherspoon, who it's like, I know what I'm getting from him. I'm not, I don't have to bet on anything because it's on film. He's going to test a certain way. And it's going to be just more things that I have like right here. This is my, why we should draft Devin Witherspoon. There is no, like we have to project that he's going to be good at this or that he's going to be good at that. And I, I think that that's what I like that he's your CB one is because you know what you're getting. There's no, no concerns. There's no questions about what you're getting. You know exactly what you're getting with him. Dude, a thousand percent. And I love what you said about Clark Phillips. I'm I'm totally with you. Uh, I will have Clark Phillips ranked above where the consensus is on him for sure. And I was totally with you with the, the USC game. Uh, it was striking him against Addison in the uh, Pac-12 championship game. Um, I remember I wrote a tweet because I like I, I think I said something like uh, he, he has Jordan Addison in witness protection because it was just like, oh, my God, like y- you don't see Jordan Addison get a race off the whiteboard like that. And it, it like he just like he there was large portions of that game where he's just a non-factor. He was literally on a milk carton. Um, and, and, and what you said, it, it's totally right. Like Jordan Addison gets that natural, I'm sorry, that separation as naturally as you and I breathe against other cornerbacks with Clark Phillips. Uh, uh-uh. no, no, no. Um, and so th- there's other, like, th- you know, like th- the, the guys that Clark Phillips may in the NFL that m- he might struggle more against are like the, the taller, stronger kind of guys, but like, uh, in, you, you could situationally try to, you know, g- get them on the guy's uh, the, 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 wouldn't be the size mismatches. He, he, the guy like, um, 
uh, Kelly Ringo would get annihilated by Jordan Addison. So like, I don't like the thing of like, oh, you know, um, uh, Clark Phillips, you know, there, there's guys that are going to uh, nullify him in the NFL without mentioning the other side of it of like, yeah, Kelly Ringo, uh, he can't really uh, uh, move directions really well. And, and, and his instincts aren't very good and, and stuff like, like, I realize he's, he's a really good North to South size speed, like a freak. Uh, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, like there were a, a receiver type that would annihilate him and dead, you know? For sure. For sure.